So this week's video continues our February tips and tricks video theme. I'm going to offer you two tricks that I use when I'm knitting socks. If you want to jump right to the section of the video where a specific technique starts, you can find a direct link down in the description for each of the techniques. The first trick I'm going to show you is how I pick up stitches along a sock heel flap. I don't use the standard method, um, so you might find this technique um, interesting or unusual or something that you want to try too. The second trick that I'm going to show you is the technique that I use to prevent a hole at the junction between where the sock flap ends and the instep stitches begin in a sock. First, let's get started with some background and context information for how stitches are typically picked up along the side of a heel flap. The standard instruction for picking up stitches along the edges of a heel flap are to pick up one stitch for every slipped selvage stitch. So the way that you would typically do that would be to insert uh, your needle between the selvage stitch and the second stitch in so that when you inserted it between there you could see both legs of the selvage stitch uh, sitting on the needle um, and then you would grab a bite of yarn um, and pull it through and then you'd have a new live stitch on the needle. So the idea is that you're picking up and knitting one stitch at a time to create the new live uh, loops on the needle. What this does when you're done is that it, it, it creates that whole selvage stitch on each edge ends up on the inside of the fabric. So on each side of the heel flap on the inside, you have a column of selvage stitches lying on the inside of the fabric. Now for most people, this wouldn't even be noticeable when they're wearing it. Although the thicker the yarn, like this is pretty thick yarn, the thicker the yarn that you're using, the bulkier that ridge will be and the more likely it will be that it will be felt. So I do a different way. I handle picking up stitches differently. Rather than doing one stitch, picking up and knitting one stitch at a time, I pick up all of the stitches at once and then I knit them. And the way that you do that is by lifting just the very edge of each stitch, so one leg of each stitch. So if you look at the selvage, stitches they look like V's and so the very edge of the selvage is this outer leg right here and so I take a double pointed needle and I pick up that outer leg of each one of those stitches all the way up. So one of the advantages of doing this is that you can uh, get all the stitches on, make sure that you have the number that you were expecting to have. So I have, I'm wanting to have 10. So I have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. I do have 10 stitches. Now I, I do have the, the wrong side of the work facing me and that's just because the salvage stitch rolls and it's easier for me to see what I'm doing from this side of the work. So I just use a double pointed needle to do that and then I can, I can go back to having the right side of the work facing me while I knit them. Now if you look at these that they're sitting on the the needle and they all are sitting so that they're angled to the right on the needle. If you saw my video last week about make one increases um, you'll realize that what these look like are a whole looks like 10 make one right increases all sitting on the needle at the same time and we're going to knit them as if they were make one right increases. We're going to knit them so that when these loops come off the needle they will be twisted. And the reason that we want to twist them is that because we have just picked up one leg of the selvage stitch and put it on the needle, the other leg has had any excess slack pulled out of it. So if we were to just knit this stitch like a normal stitch, like just go through the center here and knit it, we would have the same problem that we would have if we were working a make one increase and not twisting it. You end up with big uh, gappy holes, if you can see that. Um, so instead, 
we have these on the needle and we work them so that they twist and if you remember with um, when you want the stitches to twist you look at the angle that that strand is sitting on the needle and you want the working needle to uh, be pointing in that direction while you work it so we're going to be coming through the front of each one of these stitches and it's always tricky it's always awkward because um, when you're working them so they twist it's nev never as comfortable as working them so that they don't twist but we're going to do every one of these all the way across the needle and now it's time to pick up the stitches for this selvage and again it's curled over so we can see we want the, you want we want to pick up this very edge uh, one here so I'm going to start up at this end I'm going to do one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so I have these 10 stitches sitting on the needle and this time you can see that they're lying on the needle so that they're angled to the left so they look a lot like make one left increases and we're going to work them the same way so that they come off the needle twisted so that means that the working needle has to point to the left and so that we have to knit them through the back in order to make them come off the needle twisted so you can see as it comes off the needle it's point it's angled to the left So you can see that those are all angled to the left and this first side here they're all angled to the right and when you look on the inside of the flap what you'll see is also you'll see those angled stitches but you'll see that the fabric is perfectly flat on the inside there's so I use a trick I learned from Charlene Church's book sensational knitted socks and that is to create an increase on each side of this gap so I, I increase two stitches right here one on each side and then on the next round I will work those two stitches together and that will prevent a gap from occurring so the way that you do that is you look you can see this this strand of yarn right here and I want to use a double pointed needle that follows that path that goes through the two stitches on either side. So I insert it down here. I'm following the path of that strand of yarn. And I'm coming back up. And now you see that I have two stitches sitting on the needle and they're angled. One is angled to the right and one is angled to the left. Now these stitches I don't want to work so that they twist. I want them to be regular stitches. And so if when you are working stitches and you want them to twist, you have your working needle pointing in the same direction as the angle it sits on the needle. When you don't want them to twist, you have them so that they cross each other. So this one angles to the right, so I will have my working needle pointing to the left when I knit that stitch. So I'm going to, and you're just coming right down through the center of that stitch. You can see it's not going to twist. I knit that one. And then I, I'm going to come to the right on this one. It's going right down to the center and I'm going to catch that stitch. So these two stitches, when I come back to them on the next round, I will decrease them together. Either can do a, a knit two together or I can do a, an SSK decrease. Either one will work. Okay, so I've worked across all of the instep stitches and now I need to handle that junction between the instep and the heel flap and I'll do the same thing that I did uh, on the other side of the instep I look for this top strand and I follow the path of that strand uh, using a double point inserting a double point through them and again you'll see the stitches one's angled to the right and one's angled to the left and I want the working needle to to cross that I want it, them to point in the opposite directions of each other to keep them open increases You can see on the inside of this sock that it's 
very flat. You can see the transition. The, these stitches are knit in a different direction than this, but it's very flat on the inside. You can see here is where I've done my little increase trick on that side of the sock. And then I've done it here on the here on the other side of the sock. So it really does do a good job um, with closing the gaps. You can also see in this sock, I've done that same trick with the twisted stitches along each edge of this heel flap here. So you can see the twisted stitches along here. And it's a very nice looking finish to the sock.